Hello everyone and welcome to today's calc lesson. Today we're going to be learning how to use the, a limit to find the area under a curve. So we're going to use this example to kind of intro and get us into the idea of using a limit to find the area under a curve. It says find the upper and lower sums for the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals x squared and the x-axis between x equals 0 and x equals 2 using n sub intervals. So this is new in the fact that we're just talking about n sub intervals. We don't know how many there are in this case. So let's go ahead and draw between 0 and 2. So here is 0 and then here is 2. So we're just gonna draw our line here and now we're gonna have n sub intervals and so really we can draw these anywhere we just want to make sure that they are equal in length okay so I'll just make an interval here here and here now you can make as many as you would like uh, just keep them all equal and let's use this one to find our lower sum here and in that case we're going to be inscribing our rectangles so in this case we're going to be looking for left endpoints okay so this is going to be our left hand sum <coughs> okay so the first thing we need to find here is our delta x and that's going to be the difference in the interval. So it's going to be 2 minus 0, and then divided by how many subintervals? And now we have n, so it's n. And so our delta x is really 2 over n. And this is our first case where our delta x is not an actual number that we know, but it's variable 2 over n. Now, if we're going to find our left endpoints, remember that our x sub i minus 1 is going to be our a or our starting point plus i minus 1 times our delta x so in this case we get i minus 1 times 2 over n okay and we could write this as one single fraction we could write 2 times i minus 1 over n and so these are going to be our left end points right there so let's go ahead and find our lower sum and in this case it's going to be our left hand sum and so we have our sum from i equals 1, and in this case we're just going up to n, of our function at our left endpoints. So our function was x squared, so we're going to plug this into x squared. So we have 2 times i minus 1 over n squared, and then times delta x, because we need times the width of the rectangles there, so 2 over n. All right, so let's just reduce this down a little bit here. So this 2 times i minus 1 is really uh, 2i minus 2. And let's go ahead and square that. So we still have the sum i equals 1 to n. So if I square 2i minus 2, that's going to give me 4i squared minus, let's see, 2 times 2i times 2, which is going to be minus 8i, and then plus 2 squared, so plus 4, and then this is going to be over n squared. Okay, and then all of this is still going to be times 2 over n. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just multiply the 2 over n into this right here.
And so when I distribute this, I'm going to get 8i squared minus 16i plus 8. And then this is going to be over n cubed. So now if we want to find the sum of each of these, we're going to kind of just jump and we can we can see here the i squared and the i and then just the constant of 8 right here. So we are going to use our formulas, our summation formulas. So uh, in this case, we're going to have 8 over n cubed times then the sum of i squared, which is 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n, and this is all going to be over 6. And then for the i, so now we're going to have minus 16 over n cubed times, well i changes into n squared plus n over 2, and then plus, now we have our constant, so that's just going to be uh, 8 over n cubed, and that's going to be times n. Okay, so this would be the area under the curve given that we have n rectangles. Now what we're going to do is think about how we can get a more and more a better and better approximation of the area under the curve by allowing more rectangles. So if we just added more rectangles here, we're going to get a closer approximation. So here you can see I've cut all my rectangles in half, and now I have even better approximation. If I continue doing this process, of just adding more and more rectangles, we get a better approximation. So one way that we can get a really good approximation is by letting the number of sub-intervals go to infinity. So what if we had an infinite amount of rectangles in here? Well, that would give us a pretty close approximation. So what we want to do at the very beginning of all of this is take the limit as n goes to infinity. And so I'm going to add that on here to the end, the limit as n goes to infinity of all of this. Okay, now that's kind of madness. Uh, but we can do this using our Bobo Botten Eats DC. So if we look at this one, notice that the exponents are the same. So that limit is going to equal the division of the coefficients. So it's going to be 8 times 2 over 6, or 8 thirds. In this next example, notice it's bigger on the bottom. Because here we have a cubed, here's an n squared. And when it's bigger on the bottom, that's going to be our bobo. So this actually equals 0 for our limit. And in our last example, it's also bigger on the bottom. And so this is going to be plus 0 as well. So the limit as n goes to infinity of our sum is going to be 8 thirds. Okay? And that's going to be a very good approximation of the area under this curve. Now this, of course, was our lower sum. Let's see what happens now when we take our upper sum. Okay, So we can have this right here. And we're just going to draw some arbitrary subintervals here, much like we did before. And now we want upper sum, so we want actually circumscribed rectangles here. Okay, so there's our rectangle. 
And in this case, notice we're going to be talking about a right hand sum. So we need to figure out what our right endpoints are going to be. And so this is just x sub i. And in this case, it's going to be 0 plus i delta x. So that's just going to be i times 2 over n. Or we could rewrite this as 2i over n. Okay, so there is our x sub i. And let's go ahead and find our right hand sum now. So it's going to be i equals 1 to n of our function at x sub i. So it's going to be 2i over n squared times delta x, which is 2 over n. All right, and then let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So 2i squared over n is going to be 4i squared over n squared. And then we still have times our delta x 2 over n. And let's go ahead and distribute this. So we're getting the sum from i equals 1 to n of 8i squared over n cubed. And let's go ahead and apply our formulas now. And this one just has an i squared in it. So we're going to have 8 over n cubed. And then i squared was right here. So that's 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n over 6. So here is our sum for the right-hand sum given n rectangles. And again, we're going to think about that same process. What if we added twice as many subintervals? And we want our inscribed rectangles. Okay, and we're going to think about adding more and more and more and more intervals until we get infinite. So again, we want the limit as n goes to infinity. So we want an infinite amount of rectangles here. So that means we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum that we found out. Now in this case, we just have uh, two terms being multiplied. So we look here and the exponents are the same. So that's just an, an eats DC. So this is going to be 8 times 2 times 6, which is 8 thirds. So here's our approximation of our upper sum using our right-hand sums. Now here is a pretty amazing thing. That our left-hand sum and our right-hand sum, when we take our limit as n goes to infinity, they equal each other. So remember that the area was supposed to be between our lower and upper sum. Remember that? So our capital S of n and then our lowercase s of n. And area was supposed to be between that. But now those two things are the same. And so instead of getting an approximation, we're getting an exact answer. So that brings us to our theorem right here. If f is a continuous non-negative function on the interval a to b, then the limits as n approaches infinity of both the lower and the upper sums exist and are equal to each other. So in other words, our limit of our lower sum, shown here, equals the limit of our upper sum. And that's going to be the area under the curve. Now one note is that lower and upper sums won't always be our left and right hand sums. So if we were to draw some intervals here on this function, notice it's not monotonic. In other words, it increases then decreases. If I were to make a lower sum or lowercase s of n, then I would want all inscribed rectangles. 
So notice here it would go here and here. Okay, and so this would be using a right end point, and this would be using a left end point. Okay, same thing would be true if we wanted to find an upper sum. Okay, so a capital S of n. Our upper sum wants to be circumscribed. So we have all of our rectangles on the outside now. And notice here, we would have a left end point, but here we have a right end point. So that creates a little bit of a problem for us because we've only uh, ever dealt with sums that are all either left end points or all right end points, uh, nothing quite like this.